This episode is sponsored by Baby Audio, maker of creative instruments and effects plugins. Whether it's retro lo-fi goodness with Super VHS or silky top-in with Smooth Operator, Baby Audio is all about adding flavor to a mix. So head on over to babyaud.io to learn more and take 15% off your order using the code HMD15. I'll leave a link in the description below. But well, thank goodness there are platforms like this to do sure. it. And I'm going to introduce this podcast. We can leave all this oh, in, Angelina, sure. all by the way. Uh, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Montreal. Welcome to the Audio Nerds Podcast, <laughs> podcast for audio nerds like yourself. Mm -hmm. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. And remember, one lucky person in the comment section is going to get that VIP Gold Edition Rosetta EQ or compressor. Please make sure you leave your at name for Instagram so we can mm -hmm. DM you and tell you won. Fortunately for me, I'm a Pro Tools user, so I have a very stable life uh, mm -hmm. to the left of me. Actually, for me, mm -hmm. I'm Ableton, the astronaut, the aficionado. It's Courtney Taylor, Ableton rep of uh -huh, a lifetime. That's a fact. You know, shout maybe, out to the Excel spreadsheet. Maybe it's like my... um the no child left behind system. <laughs> it probably would have been like without you, I didn't know aficionado started with an A, man. <laughs> definitely doesn't, definitely doesn't, definitely doesn't. It definitely, doesn't, definitely does doesn't. it, which I which proves a lot. <laughs> wait, <laughs> all right, wait, hold on. No, 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 no. Oh, Stay right oh. there. Yeah. What doll do you use? I'm an uh, FL, yeah. FL Prince, we man. Do. FLP, like FL Prince, FLP. FLP. FL Pre oh, to FL Prince. Got wow, it. Wow, so, yeah. FLP. That Yo, new pendant on the way. You see, I'm trying to, we're taking it to the next level. When I pulled up, to the FL booth at Nam with my chain on, mm -hmm. I could tell it was a little weird vibe. It was just like, I mean, okay, why would he do that? Like, <laughs> I, like, I, I rep it, man. I rep it. Fact. I'm not going to hey. Maybe next year, I will all get chains. Like, hey, I'll get, man. I'll get Pro Tools. He'll get Ableton, which yours might be icy because yours might be like Canary. Like, yours could be kind of But I could, just, I could just already see them just like, hey, could you like, that, that's going to be the first time they message our pod and going to be like, hey, um, we love Courtney and everything, but can you just tell them to tone it down? It feels very gang-influenced. <laughs> yeah, tone which it, is guys. Weird. It's just a chain. Which is weird. Tone it down. But yo, when you, whenever you see us in this setting, you yep. know, we got, we, got, we got some sauce with us. We got some special, special guest, with us. man. Um, and this special guest was the first tracking engineer um, the first engineer period I met when I came to LA, right. um, and he's my favorite to use. It's been a while because I ain't been in LA, and I, I just I don't record as much out here as I used to. However, um, he's taught me a lot, and he, when I was like the prime stages of me figuring out how to operate in a studio, he was right there with me. Yeah. He saw me uh, fuck up, like uh, he saw me make mistakes, and and we learned from it. And he would just give me advice. So, without further ado, you've heard him uh, with Nicki Minaj. Lil Wayne, Big Sean, Lil Tecca, Common, Her. Her. Man, O mixed it. Omar, what's going on, man? Welcome Omar. Couch, Clap it up on one time, y'all. Yeah. Hi, yo. How you, how you doing, man? How's everything with you? Amazing, man. Just here, kicking with you guys, talking shop. That's yeah. right. Love That's right. right there. That's right. And you've been, uh, you know, obviously, I just know you, you've been very busy. And you, were you at NAMM this year by any chance? Did you go to get man, a chance? Unfortunately, no. I had some family <coughs> circumstances that didn't allow for Gotcha, yeah, gotcha, so, gotcha. I'm here to get my audio fixed with you guys. Today. Yeah, yeah. Love it, love it. Don't worry about it. We're going to make this more impactful. You Absolutely. Know what I'm like, Absolutely. heck yeah, heck yeah, for not, sure. It was not much. You know, one thing I say is, you know, I always ask people when they first come on is, what was your DAW journey, right? So, like, mm. what was the first thing that you used and then what got you to be uh, in the doll that you are in today? I mean, to be honest, I've been in Pro Tools since I started. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. gotcha. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mbox days. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm dating myself right now. No, but, it's all good. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. They know I'm old and they know I talk about the Mbox all the time. Like, yeah. all good. So you were pro just Pro Tools the whole way and stuff like that? Yeah, got the little rig at the crib. Mm -hmm. Um... Was messing around for a couple of years. Can we cuss on here? Yes, you oh, can. Oh, this is, this is fine. Okay, cool, you know cool. the vibes. All right. Um, yeah, I was I was just working with my friends, recording my dad's band, did um, some audio engineering uh, classes at the community college. Kind mm -hmm. of outgrew that and started looking into audio engineering schools. Yeah. Right. And it was just Pro Tools has always been the industry standard. That's always been my goal is to, you know, set an impact on the world. Right. So. And it's, it's amazing to see such a, like, rags to riches story with your engineering process because um, when I say those names, yeah, a lot of engineers could just throw, like, names and credits. But if I tell you these, like, only, if I'm not mistaken, right, only Nikki. Uh, Chris Brown, Lil Wayne, Nat Huge, single Drake, uh, Mona Lisa with Kendrick Lamar, mm -hmm. Hers Damage. Oh, oh, yeah? we love to know. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah, please. I mean, it was actually my idea to put Kendrick on that record. Oh, wow. wow. Talk about uh, it, bro. They were, they were, they were actually going to go with Nas, and then when I was listening to the beat, and I was early, it was just, I had just started with Wayne. Mm -hmm. I was only with him for like three weeks, so we didn't even have rapport. Right. And um, I'm sitting there listening to it, and I'm like, I'm a fucking hip hop head, bro. Yeah, right, got like, you. That's okay. my shit. Yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? So right. as a fan, I'm geeked, you know. And then I'm like, man, that would be dope because it's a story record, you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, but these rhythms, you yeah. know, who would kill these? In my head, I'm like, Dot, 
Kendrick would just mm-hmm. kill this. So I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, man, do I say something? I don't know Wayne like that. He don't right. trust me. Right. And I, and I did, and they went with it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Amazing. So like, wow. So, you know, that was my fault. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That was like Carter Five era. But it was such a timeless verse from K Dot mm-hmm. because that. Sounded like 2014 to Pimp a Butterfly, Kendrick, when he was on a feature run. Um, so for it to come out like four or five years later and still sound current was such an amazing, um, amazing choice, man. So shout out to you, bro. Yeah. I did want to talk about, uh-huh. um, with Carter Five mm. wh- while we're on it, mm. how did you... Well, I, shout out to the the efficient um, team at YMCMB because... You, from experience, especially with you, there's times where names get lost and all of a sudden we don't remember who was in the studio and what producers. So for... You had a few records on that album. Um, were they all, like... Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, he, like, honest, he like, I did most was, of those I, records. Wow. I, I got... I did, well, I'm sorry to cut you off, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. Finish what you're going to say. You're going to ask a question about it. Um, But it's just like, yeah, were they all around that era 2014-15 or did they just... Uh, uh, like later. Was it over the time of the four or five years he was in that dispute? Um... That I couldn't answer because I like he's just always working on stuff. The way I was brought in, um, they were needed an engineer. A um, couple of people threw my name in the hat. They picked me. You know, they brought me out to uh, Miami. Uh, that's a whole story. To the first time I, I worked with him, I was hungover. Yeah. <laughs> bad, bro, bad. It came to the session like you was came like, all right, let's get still it. Still partly drunk. Right, wow. right. I was so excited. Right. You know, I'm in Miami, and the thing too is um, the start time is just all over the place. Uh-huh. But um, so yeah, I showed up like still to celebrate it too hard the night before. Right, right. But and I knew it was a hard gig. Like right. I knew it was a hard gig, but right. I got through it and I was like, oh, if I could do this shit drunk, drunk, I could do this shit. Sleep. It's a breeze for you. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question yeah. as far as efficiency and stuff like that. And obviously, I've heard things about your process. Obviously, LG has had the uh, pleasure of working with you and stuff like that. When it comes to studio sessions and stuff like that, and obviously I could tell you've been doing it for a long time when you said you were just tracking like your dad's band and stuff, yeah. which is wild to hear. Um, are you the type of recording engineer that works with templates and stuff like that, like having things set up already, kind of having like some of your stuff kind of like prepped and things that I need you for the artist? Uh, this is shout out to Rob Kanelsky. That's what I came up under. Um, he gave me his template that was so simple, bro. It was, and he's like, yo, this will work in every single studio you ever step in. And right. to this day, that's all I use, wow. which really helps me because I, I feel like the craft of engineering mm-hmm. and using your ears is getting lost because of all the plugins and all this and template that. Yeah. I'm looking, I'm opening up people's templates. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, they got like 10K boosts, 60 Bs. I'm like, bro, how you even boost that? You didn't even hear what, yeah. what going into doing. it. Right. You know what I'm the saying? The original, right, yes. right. So right. to answer you, my template is super simple, right. all basic Avid plugins, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it's my ear. You know what right. I'm saying? That's how I'm moving. Like, right. yeah. what does this need? Like, you know, um, as far as setting up the studio, though, I do try to come in, check the gear. A lot of times, you know, I freelance, so I'm in different studios a lot. Right. So I kind of want to get familiar a little bit right. um, with the room. You know, there's so many different boards all the time. So I'll just, I'll come and talk to the assistants. Yo, is there any channels that don't work? Or, is, you know, things right. that I got to be of worried of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got you. Yeah. So, so it, you, go ahead. Uh-huh. I just want to say, uh-huh. for the record, that template is so good. Why? Because... You ruined uh, a lot of tracking engineers for me, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be real honest <laughs> because that was my first session um, at a bigger studio. Um, so I was having an engineer. Usually we'd do everything ourselves, or I send it to Dev and all of that. Mm. And he figured out. So he was working with an artist named Ose, and mm, we had the Ose. day before, mm-hmm. the day before we had a different engineer, and it was weird. It was a little <laughs> weird um, because it was just it was always a thing with her vocal that we could never get it. Right where we wanted, it. and even to this day, like she, um, she records into FL because she's normal, and um, <laughs> yeah. she sent me over this session, Satire. and I still have trouble like getting her vocal where it's at. But my guy, and these aren't mixed records; these are all roughs. Right, he figured it out so well that it's to, it's the standard to this day. Like I'll send, <laughs> and these are records from 2020, 2021, right, and I'll send these records to whoever's mixing. I remember I sent it to, um, damn, I can't say his name, but huge engineer, and I'm just like, yo. Like what you did with it, the 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 um the vocal sounds cool. It's not where we want it. Here's an old reference that we did. I always say it's an old um like rough mix. Right. And can you get it more like that? Uh, I guess from the tone wise. So I wonder like how do you um or was it always easy to adapt to whatever vocal that you were uh, working with, especially with such a simple template? Um, 
<clears throat> well, I come from, I did a lot of writing sessions. You got to be fast. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So that's really what it is, just dialing it in. And that's like, that's how I, my approach is. It's like, it's just got to sound good. Like, I can't sit through a writing session if it doesn't sound good. I can't sit through right. a session if it doesn't sound good. So I just got quick with the EQ and I guess. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's funny you say that because like, I've sent out, you know, I track a lot more than I mix and I'd like to, I'm trying, I'm working on the opposite Oh, of that. okay, yeah. okay, we'll talk about that. Yeah, okay. um, and it's funny, bro, because people will hit me, these big name mixers, and mm-hmm. they're like, bro, they're not touching your reference mix on wow. a two track. But then it gets tough and I'm like, well, then put me in the, put me, put me, put me, put me in the put, game. Put me in the fucking game. Yeah, yeah, yeah fact. And I, I, and for whatever reason, it, it's just, it's just bigger names, you know, it's, yeah. it, it is what it is. More it's the Hollywood numbers. at the end of it's the day. It's a politics to it, I'm sure, yeah. of course, you know the vibes. Yeah, um. But yeah, it's funny because I get that a lot. They're like, man, they can't t- they can't catch your ref. Yeah. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So you're very big on you would say you're very big on capturing the sound, but also yeah. getting it to a place where this shit sounds finished. Like yeah. you know what I mean, like for sure yeah. and stuff like that. Again, shout out to Rob. He, he used to tell me, bro, like, stay till it's done. You know what I mean? If that means they gotta leave, mm-hmm. like, and you're here, to, whatever, stay till it's done. Because at the end of the day, this is this, like something could happen, and this is the last thing that could be out there that you touched. Right. So that's why I said, going back to losing the craft of engineer, I think that's lost, man. So many people are just like, look at me, look what I'm doing, this and that, and which is fine, which is cool, marketing all that. But it's like I'm listening to what you're doing, bro, and it it ain't right. It, it ain't. You know what I'm it saying? Don't sound good. No, it doesn't right. sound good, and that's what, always what I've kind of prided myself on, and and and. Uh, is is if that's my craft? That's what my legacy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, everything right. that I touch is like, oh yeah, you can hear that. Even my tracking, I'll EQ and compress and print, and if it sounds good, it is good. Right. Yeah. Especially yeah. if you're cap, and I understand what you're saying with printing. One question I do have for you: um, You've actually done a lot of records that I love to death. Uh-huh. Um, one in particular is uh, Damaged. Oh, I love that record, dude. So like, I want to know. From a from a tracking standpoint, so yeah. as far as how you're capturing that sound of that vocal, and the reason why I'm saying this is because she is a very subtle yeah. singer to me. She's very soft. She's very elegant with her vocal, but it always feels like even if somebody comes on and starts ra da 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 da, she is still like nice and upfront. What are what is that tracking chain like for you? Commonly, I know it probably changes, but no, like no, from it a doesn't. State. Most oh, of the time, okay. I mean, this is this is for most artists now that. That travel a lot. Uh-huh. It's it, to me. It's either a Telefunken uh, 251, mm-hmm. U87, yeah. to a, a 73, uh-huh. to a CL1B. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The reason being, that's going to be in 99% of the studios they step in, yeah. and they might do a verse with me and a hook somewhere else. Yeah. And you know right. what I'm saying? So the consistency is important. Right. And it's about making it sound good. Like right. That, at the end of the day, that's that's what it is. It's in in. Um, each performance is going to be different, man. So I ride those faders, man. I, mm. I, I, even sometimes, like, because she could fucking belt, too. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I'm riding that threshold right, as I'm right. learning the song. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And when you're riding a threshold and stuff like that, this is great. I'm so glad we landed on this because I feel like that's part of the art that, yeah. that has gotten lost. Exactly. Like, in school, they would teach us, hey, if the singer's too loud, then back off on the preamp. And I was like, I kind of don't want to touch it. Yeah. Like, when I was younger. Yeah. So, like, how are you preparing for those moments, like, when it comes to riding, like, like, are you just getting familiar with the song first and knowing, okay, that's going to come yeah. and stuff like that? Okay, yeah. and then kind of just dialing back and stuff like yeah. that. And are you backing off from the compressor stage on the CL1B or are you backing off on the preamp stage of the... Uh, no, the, the threshold itself. Oh, you're doing the threshold so, And I try to stay, like, mm. with the... With the with the um, compression, the same, like, dBs, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So if she's going to belt, okay, still want those three dBs. So we're... Um, I was fortunate enough to work with, with, with DJ Quick. Wow. And... Man, he would mark he would mark things on on man. It was so fun, bro. We did a whole mix and we were on the board and we were writing it. So he was marking, like, okay, from the hook, he would tell me like, yo, this bucket right here, this is your bucket. I want these these faders here to go to this point. And so that's what I started doing. I started marking it, putting oh, it on tape, gotcha. there, knowing where it's gonna be, so right. that my hand don't slip too much. You know, right? What I'm so you just know like oh, that's right there, that's yeah. right there. Wow, that's so funny. Oh, wow. L- l- little uh, little just film nerd uh, topics for, from that uh-huh. caveat. That's actually what um, second and first ACs do when they're racking focus on actual sets. They yes. mark their points. To know when he comes at that stop point. Right here. Stop right stop there. Stop right here. Wow, that's, that's such tough. an interesting way to do it. Got gotcha. video nerds on the way. Hey. Soon, soon comes. Yeah, come, right. Soon nah, come. Uh, not on this platform. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um, I got enough going on. Uh-uh. I do want to say, because we can vocal you to death, but um, sure. The, sure. the proof is in the pudding, man. Thanks. Bro, all the records isn't insane. But one thing about um her when she works is it's 
like randomly you'll you'll get I'm sure you'll get a production session mm -hmm. or it's like it'll be heavy drums and she plays everything so she'll want to track everything and cats like Camper who will just start in FL and then move to Pro Tools I wonder how you uh, manage all of that because I'm sure for a lot of tracking engineers it could be a lot to handle at once um <clears throat> I don't know, man. I've been doing it so long. Yeah. I, I came up under no ID. Mm -hmm. right. So wow. he's like always doing outboard gear and he'll be like, yo, I want to be able to re-record these strings out of my Ableton, get up into the tape machine, into this Fruity Loop setup and back out to the amp. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Right. So, and, I, and it got to be on the fly. Right. right. And then that'll be on Monday. And then on Tuesday, it'll be like a completely different thing. Right. Yeah. right so right, it right. just, um, yeah, I've been fortunate, man, that I just always had been working with people that just push that envelope and it forces me to stay on top of my shit. Right. Absolutely. Right, when I right. look at um, certain records and her discography, it's just like, there's a lot of instrumentation. So huh. what what would you say, if you could recall, was one of those sessions where it was just like, God, Lee, we're going crazy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Snacks, I talk about this all the time. Question. It was, I was, because I used to work with, um, with the Universal Music Publishing before they, they cut their studio down a lot. And, and this never came out. I don't think anything ever came out of it, but it's one of my favorite sessions it was chad hugo from uh, the neptunes yeah. with right. nephew with nephew right uh, wow another beast bro so yeah. they, they're like mike everything and i'm like everything, everything. i'm like what, what do you mean it's like everything the drums the guitars i want the vocal booth up i want the pianos up I, and right. then nephew had his synthesizer and drum machine and um chad has his 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 different keyboards and stuff right. and they were literally just jamming until they caught something. Wow. And it was the coolest shit because that's kind of Nephew's vibe, man. He'll just, people will be talking in the studio and right. he'll just be playing, bro, with one hand the drums, the other hand the keys. Right. And once everybody starts moving in the room, it's that's he's like, it. okay, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, we got something. Let's yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Like, let's go. Yeah. So let me ask you this question when uh -huh. it comes to synthesizers and stuff and kind of like, because they wanted mic'd, right? Yeah. You're not just going DI into No, it. no, those were DI. Well, I mean, whatever was DI was DI, but okay. it was like the pianos. Uh huh. Um, the drums, uh, a whole bunch of percussions right. that we had in the vocal booth, and he just literally run everything. And then, like, they, they'd like something that we had a signal to, like, mark it to go, oh, back, to to go back to that loop and just catch yeah. it on time and stuff like that. Mm. Oh, man. That's so that's really loops of that. Chaotic, yeah. like, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, kind of But it's session. fun. Yeah, no, it's You beautiful. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's, like, I miss that. I want that. I don't right. see that enough. Like, yeah. it's a lot of laptops, which is cool. Sure. But it's, it's man, like, music is energy. Yeah. Right? yeah. And there's something that... Uh, Box can't reproduce. You know what I'm right, saying? I get the it. human element, the human touch. Yeah, like, right. There's a reason why certain guitar players they might not be the most technically savvy in the world, right. but the way they play that motherfucker, it's know? just different. You know what I mean? Like, let me yeah. let me ask you something because you you strike me as a purist with recording. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And something in school we used to do a lot. A lot was we used to mic like the cabinets. Like we used to mm -hmm. mic, like uh, actually mic the actual amps and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say is like a go to mic for or just technique wise to like mic a guitar? from an amp and stuff like that um you can get two two uh the what are they, the 57s yeah and then just put them like you know where the, the the back of the capsule is yeah yeah i put them right up to each other first i'll shine the light to see where the cat where the cone is oh gotcha put one right up to the net and the other one a little bit further back gotcha and then i usually put an md421 in the back as well mm. to get the bottom mm -hmm. kind of like to get the, the roundness and stuff yeah, like that just the full it just has different little growl to it sometimes interesting too. okay and then i'll try to capture like a room mic too so i could just compress right and, and catch also oh, all so what is that like how many mics is that so far four about four, four mics on the guitar yeah. wow yeah. and i'm nerding out Sorry, I'm yeah. so sorry. Let me know that. <laughs> and then when that's in Pro Tools with those four mics, like how are you kind of like uh, doing it? Is everything laying on top of each other? Is there a little bit of movement? Yeah, and like, if there's, if you know, if it, I'll check for phase issues. Sure. Obviously, uh -huh. align that if I need to, and then just blend it. Just listen. Mm -hmm. just right. Listen. Because it it's good. one sound technically, yeah, and it's yeah. different tones. So phasing wise, you won't have such a big issue because they're tonality wise. Yeah, but different. the one in the room might because it the it, it, time. Yeah, the timing. The, yeah, the yeah, phase. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so you would be yeah. very careful and weary of that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Are you using uh, any different polar pattern for the room mic by any chance as well? Um, it depends. I mean, sometimes where it depends on the placement. If it's like in the corners, not too much. But if it's like in the center, then I'll use like the um, omni omnidirectional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Super dope. That's what I um, to nerd out. Yeah, man. Uh, one thing I find really beautiful in one of your records, um, and I don't know if it was much on the tracking side or the mixing side, so you could tell me. It's rare that you can hear a mix. Uh, well, me, I'm not an engineer, so you guys might it's just okay, call bro. cap on this. FL Studio but, got you, bro. It's all right. First of all, shout out to the engineers that use FL Studio. <laughs> I hope your therapy bill not too high. That's a fact. Um, I do want to say uh, very few songs you can timestamp 
post 2000, especially with the technology era, mm-hmm. there's very few songs where you can timestamp like, yo, this mix sounds like this year. Um, and that's a beautiful thing to me. And one specific record that I always say, like, if you want to get a record sounding like the blog era, is this record is Marvin and Chardonnay. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is. So I wanted to know... Um, I wanted to know what uh, the... I don't even know lie, that was a rap. Man. It was. I ain't gonna lie. That was, <laughs> like, you dropped that bar, like, yeah. audio nerd bar, bro. Like, I wanted wow. to know what, what that recording environment was, because um, I know you've had to record in weird places. Yeah, that was at No ID Studio. Okay. Um, down the street, actually. And oh. Rob was doing most of that, the tracking and the mixing on that, and I would step in when... Um, they needed me. Right, so, right. Yeah, we just always had the the the, the vocal chain up and and just go. So just go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but oh. that yeah, that was a lot. That was no ID did a lot. Wow, <laughs> that was fine. Wow, damn. Yeah, that's fine. That's and I, oh, quick, go ahead. Use this. I was. I do have a one that I was curious about. Mm-hmm. I was. I actually shoot. Actually, I, we were doing like hard research on it. Um, I was very curious about this one record off of a off of Corday's sophomore album. Mm. Um, the feature with her and Dirk Chronicle. Yeah. Did you track her for that? I know yeah. Manny mixed that. You did. I'm pretty sure. Uh, man, I get lost. Bro. I'm You're sure. Good. I don't You're good. I, 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 so much so many records and then they come out years later. Right. Um, I'm pretty sure though that that uh yeah, I tracked her for that cuz I know that I we did some features. Yeah. For- if you if you do recall, what was that like because I know when it comes to like her, as we've established, she has a very specific t- tonality. Mm. Um, it's very kind of soft, plush, but mm. also very commanding and powerful. Yeah, mm. very. Versus Corday, who's a little bit more subdued in his yeah. in his tonality, and yeah. Dirk, who's more like a little bit more out there. Right. So, how did you like? What was what was it like finding that balance between those three artists for them tracking her? I, when I if it's the records that I'm thinking about, Dirk wasn't on it yet. It okay. Was, it was mm. just. I mean, to be honest, I'm not concerned with. Well, how Corday sounds. My job is to make her sound her great. Sound. Got you. So that's it. So right. like after that, my job is done. Right. Yeah. Everybody else fucks it up. That's on them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know. And <laughs> right. it feels like they took like uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think Manny did the overall mix. Probably. But that was like I th- I listened to that record and it's so it's weird and eerie to me for Cor- for a Corday record because I'm like. This feels like a her record. This doesn't uh, feel like Corday. Mm, like they uh, came to her. Yeah. 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 I, I give it what you're saying. You know? Shoot, it could no? be one of those situations. I could be very wrong, yeah. by the way. But it could be one of those situations where even if, if I'm a mixer, right? And I'm listening, I'm like, damn, that vocal's they clean. It's fire. Yeah, I ain't saying. gonna lie. I, I hear I, a lot of See? records I record that I'm like, they didn't touch. Yeah. yeah. Did, bro. Like, oh, wow. Why am I not getting mixing credits on this? Yo, <laughs> I hear that, bro. That's <laughs> funny. Wow. Like, so even for you, like, you know, that's actually a funny thing. Like, being in a tracking stage and then hearing a mix and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, how does sometimes, how does that situation go or feel to you when you get, you know, you tracked it and you're like, beautiful, and then you hear a mix? Like, is sometimes, I don't want to say disappointed, but sometimes you're like, oh, they took it somewhere else, like, and stuff like that. Like, does that ever occur for you? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm sure it does, you know, that I could recall, like, oh, I don't, I'm not really fucking with that. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. I can't right. do anything about it. Yeah. So I'm not trying to put too much energy into it. Right, you right, know? right, right, right. Just, I respect that. coulda, woulda. Right. Yeah. That, that, you did your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. She approved what you sent over. Yeah. 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 Actually, when we have engineers on here, we never, like, hone in on tracking. I remember, um, and this is years ago, so I could be wrong. Okay. But did you um, tour with Wayne? Yeah, I did. So how was that? Whoa. Like, how was recording I that? Mean, I ain't trying to turn this into Cat Williams. Nah, nah, <laughs> oh, just joking, just joking. Just joking. He no, no, would no, no. never do that. No, it's, it's no. why it's, 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 it was awesome because um, Wayne's a legend, bro. Like yeah. I, I earned a whole new level of respect seeing how hard that man works. Like right. I don't think anyone besides her maybe uh-huh. works as hard. Like wow. right. he literally all he does is rap, skate. <laughs> Go bitches, you yeah, know what I'm mean, saying? Like, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, his sure, life, sure. man. Right, right. And it was, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, definitely came with some challenges too, because we're on a bus. Yeah. Mm. Um, the plug-in situation on the on the tour bus, and we're in a different city in a different studio every day. So I'm having to call the studio ahead of time, like, yo, this is plugins that I need. Mm. If you don't have it, you know, let me figure it out so I can get the installer and right. Yeah. And sometimes we're getting there two, three in the morning, so yeah. you know, like, everybody's like zombie mode and you're yeah. like look like we're ready to go like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. wow it, it was wonder, fun it was a lot of fun That's yeah i wonder for wayne uh, specifically he's very like we know it's off the top you mm-hmm. gotta be quick with it mm-hmm. um because them quick few seconds of a plug and crashing or something could really make a difference oh, in the man. verse mm-hmm. yeah. so talk to us about that uh, with him or with just yeah. artists period just, uh, i think uh, i want to hear about wayne okay uh, wait, okay, okay, all, okay like we know wayne yeah, yeah, yeah. i yeah. mean <clears throat> Man, it's, see, this is where it gets tough for me because I think mm-hmm. in the studio, and I think this is what's helped me a lot 
too is because it's a sacred space. So mm-hmm. if you weren't there, like I don't really like to discuss it. You know I what I'm saying? I get it. I understand. understand. Right. Yeah. Right, like right, it's right, a, right. like bro. That's it's such a sacred space. It's so it's where they're vulnerable. Sure. It's, you know, there's so much shit. Sometimes, bro, straight up, it'll be like today's gonna be therapy, bro. Like mm-hmm. this. I just talking and maybe I'll say no. A few we're ra- he's rapping. You know what I mean? Oh, Getting it out, but it ain't God. ever gonna do nothing. Why? Right. It is never going anywhere. Right. It's just Let me like there's some shit up that I need to get this shit off. Right. Cool. Let's get it. Wow. Super got you. Tough. That's so interesting. I always felt like um you know the tracking engineer we bring this up a lot on this podcast mm-hmm. is one of the most unsung hero within the process absolutely um and i think that people don't realize that if you know what makes a what what gives a lot of mixers uh a lot of how can i say a lot of uh, cushion is the recording engineer. Yeah. Like, I know I've met so many mix engineers that be like, yo, bro, I didn't have to do much. And it'll be like the biggest records yeah. you've ever heard. And they'll be like, I didn't have to do much. You know, and in that recording engineer, I feel like just doesn't get the it's accolades right. like yeah, the mixer absolutely. right now. Yeah, for sure. So it's just interesting and why I was really gun ho just having you on is because oh. I was like, dog, like, I just want other people to know. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. no, it's just as important or even maybe more yeah. uh, in the recording process than the mixing. Because because of a bad recording, is. Gonna, oh, it's shit. You're not gonna get can't a good mix out of a turd. Can't bro. polish a turd, dog. I yeah. remember when oh, that's hard. I when y'all first, oh, you young as hell. Yeah. You never heard that one. <laughs> uh, but what, 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 when I first got put on to Omar um, through you and stuff like that, when Ose, mm-hmm. you know, Ose was bouncing around a lot and stuff like that, and they were recording. And I remember I, I was like, I was like the only person that would casually record her. Like, mm-hmm. that I was like, mm-hmm. at least you know, we're good. You were like, I know I'm going to get a New good York, sound. Was, mm-hmm. Yeah. New York, it was him and Buggy. Yeah, and that was it. Buggy casually. Was the only. Yes. Other Buggy. person. Shout out to Buggy. Only other person that could even get her vocal like that. And that right. came from, hey, yo, listen to this mm-hmm. real quick. So, And that was it. Shout out Buggy Ocker. And then you went to LA <laughs> and you were like, we're going to work with recording engines. I was like, yeah. bro, I'm praying for you. You know, bless yeah. your heart. I really hope yeah, everything. We had some bad sessions. And right. I, remember the, yeah. I remember, I don't know if it was the first, it was before Omar, like that en- uh, engineer came before and you were like, bro, this is tough. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was, was like, yo, bro. Where I said, yo, send me a pro uh, template. T- yes. And I'm going to try to cut it myself. So, and this yes. is back before I was Pro Tools efficient. Right. So, oh my gosh, I remember before I even got asked for your template. Um, no, I think I actually had your template, but they didn't have a lot of plugins. Ever. Right. So I gave you so, like a dumb. So we made like a dumbed down version of it. You know, like a producer from downstairs came upstairs, made a quick template. I'm not Pro Tools efficient, right. and I'm definitely not an engineer. Right. So I'm trying to record, and there's latency out the. Oh, oh no, man! He came the next day. And the amount of plugins I saw him in, like inactivate. I think Avox Duo was there, and it's just like that's <laughs> latency grabber. Command um, control. I see that Pro quickly tool. right now. Command click or oh, inactive, inactive. Auto tune is not on low latency mode. Like, oh my it was God. so much wrong with it. Right. Um, I, yeah, I, I'm so glad you real quick. I'm so glad you said that. I just walked into a session the other day or reopened one that you know we re tag mixes. Right. And I was trying to like you know just track one word, and I was like, why am I getting this latency? Auto tune's on the latency, like you mentioned and stuff. And I'm looking down my chain. I seen one of my sends, Avox Duo, and something just said, what are the odds? Yeah. Deactivated it. And I'm sitting here like, Antares, do not let us go. Let, do not let us talk to Tizio. Because I know I know Chris is recording into that duo with no latency. So what's the secret? <laughs> what are you doing? Honestly, I think uh, that's one of my favorite plugins because I feel like it's my favorite wider. Yeah. But I hate that it's only input only. Uh, I'm sorry. Mono inputs only. Uh-huh. And just the latency is in, insane. It's like ozone level latency. Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty heavy. I would say as far as uh, Antares in the auto tune is concerned, like... I would wish they just put the low latency monitoring flick switch a little more like in front because I'll be honest with you. Let me tell you something so bad that I didn't realize um, for a very long time. I re- I was using Auto-Tune EFX for yeah. a long time, yeah. like the 9. I was like, using like 9. I never upgraded because I was like, look, it ain't broke. Don't fix it. I don't want to mm-hmm. play with, you know, you know the yeah. vibes. Like, mm-hmm. you know the sound of that tune. You're like, yeah. I don't want to mess with it. And I remember, um, I, I don't know if it was Jess Jackson that he was like, kind of showing some stuff at Auto-Tune. And I remember one day I was like looking at the wheel and I was like, I've never clicked <coughs> settings on this. And I clicked it and I saw low latency mode. Mm. And I clicked it off and I heard the vocal and I was like, oh my God, it sounds so much better. And album's done, you know what I mean? Yeah, Everything's yeah, turned yeah, in and yeah. I was like, geez. So let me ask you this question. Is there a specific auto tune that you like to go to and mm-hmm. stuff like that? Like None. None. No, I'm just joking. No, like... I say that to say I would rather have artists that could actually sing. You know, I mean, obviously it helps with the pitch correction. Sure. Bit, but the reason I said none too is because, it, bro, the 
the amount of issues that I have with auto tune bouncing from studio to studio is ridiculous. Right. There's no exactly. reason that yeah. I shouldn't be able to pull up older sessions, and it's yeah. just that's why I said it. And it's it's just like, man, like it's we're so dependent on it, and then like it could literally. Man. I had a whole hard drive, I, so I updated. Stupid. Ooh, tough day. Yeah. Bro, oh, my God, God bro. bro. I'm having to call him favors to contact them. Like, bro, you guys just fucked me on a whole hard drive full of music. Right. Because no, this shit is not pulling up right. It, all the auto-tune settings are like bro. to the right. Oh, yeah. My, no, yo, what, what the? Bro. All that money that y'all making? Move, please fix that. Man. No, fact, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You're so right. Camera? Yeah. Is this camera on me? Yeah. <laughs> when I moved from Windows to Mac <laughs> and I updated... And I got everything. Not only did my my choice of auto tune was always auto tune artist. Okay, I right. always go back and forth on that. He put me auto tune artist out of all my Avox plugins was the only one that wouldn't work. I tried to update it. I tried to backload my laptop so maybe I could get High Sierra instead of Catalina or something. Right, mm-hmm. didn't work. <clears throat> now I switch everything out. Um, or I'm sorry, on my ad libs, EFX was always there. Yeah, I go to EFX. Everything is like 400. Yeah. I'm like, it wasn't what are the we same. Doing? Like, the, all the, the dialed in settings were it changed like, why and stuff. Why did that happen? Also, well, too, I, I hate that word that the, 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 we're just giving on Tars a bad rap. Hey, listen, this is, you can't say no one ain't warn you to fix no, your plugin. It's, it's, so we're just letting you know. It's yeah. not even that. It's just like, let's, let's be real. For yeah, real. No, 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 no. Oh, real. Cool. For real. Act like we don't run into certain issues. And even if it's, I think it's probably the most popular plugin ever. That's but what I'm saying. We're bound to run into issues. And y'all, maybe that'll. Cause them to fix it, or I you know so. what I would love? What? Just give us a uh, um, legacy auto tune, like installers. Let us like, yeah. yeah. get ten point eleven, so that maybe for my old super old, I session. can crack it open. Or if I like right. old auto tune. That's yeah, give me that. I, I had a good friend of mine. Um, auto tune five is the one. Oh my! I knew you was gonna say <laughs> auto tune five. You know what's so funny? They know. Can I tell you how they know? In the new Auto Tune 10 mm-hmm. EFX, there's an Auto Tune 5 setting. Yeah, yes. wow. And I thought that was so funny. I never tried that. I never tried it that's either. Also, it's also on um, it's also on artist, the classic setting. Classic. That's what that is. Yeah, wow. it's Auto Tune 5. Because I remember one time my boy, uh, I had a good friend of mine, shout out my classic. Shout out and man. I was mixing a record from, and I was like, no, send me the session, bro. And he was like, cool. And I remember I imported his stems. And I don't know if he sent it without Auto Tune or something, I forgot what it was. But I remember whatever Auto Tune I opened up, you and you know how sensitive artists are to their Auto Tune. Oh, they yeah. Yeah, so I opened it up and I was just I didn't even do anything and I pressed it. He was like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's like, something's wrong. Yeah. And I was like, bro, it's the same auto tune. I was like, I don't, I don't know. And he looked, he was trying to tweak it. He was like, no, 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 I can't. Like, this isn't it. Like he was like, yeah. he's like, he can't do it. So I'm glad we're saying it. Yeah. Auto tune, phenomenal company. They even releasing yeah, a lot sure. of dope when it plugins. works, it's yeah. great. Exactly. Yeah. When yeah. it works. It right. Works. <laughs> when. It, so working on the her sessions. So right. Yeah. We have two rooms going. Mm-hmm. She's just a beast. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the exact same auto tune in both rooms. Right. We're bouncing sessions back and forth. Nope. As soon as I open it again, everything is just going to the oh right. My and I'm like, no. Oh, no. And I'm ha- we're having to do screenshots of every, you know, like setting. Right. And that's that was the workaround for them. But it's right. like, yo, that's crazy. Because it it's not cracks. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's official. It's right. Official right, stuff. Right, right. The exact same version. Right. This should not be happening. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta talk, we gotta talk to them about that. Also, yeah. it's easy, I'm sure. Also, yeah. too, when it comes to artists specifically, I know this is only artists that deals with that since mm-hmm. LJ put me on. Um Please, Antares, disable because I know they all load up with low latency mode activated. Yes, yes. No, no. I don't. I, not not for you. See, and Dang, that's some crazy. people it doesn't because no. Rob because Rob told me that. Who shout out Ulysses? He was saying that um, yo, I'm having problems with auto tune. It's I'm getting latency. I was like, yo, Artist go to this only, and do it. Artist was the only one that would load with low low latency. Everything else, I gotta go to settings and check it. EFX and now, for me loads low latency. And then was was even stranger specifically with artists for whenever I'm in Pro Tools in Ableton. I don't know how I, how it works with FL. Hopefully FL does not have to deal with this weird glitch. This is a very weird glitch. I'm sure they do. When you when you drop it onto the insert and it loads up automatically. When you like hover down and you see your CPU usage, on low latency, the first time you you instance it onto a track, uh-huh. it's still working as if it has no low latency activated. Oh. So then you have to go into settings, wow. click it off, and then click it back on. And let it refresh. Yeah, it into, it sometimes. Yeah. That's nasty, guys. In- However, interesting. Ahead, yeah, like we can't live without it. Without it, of like course. And we won't. Yeah. yeah. And I and I'm glad we I'm glad we'll be even at the highest level, right? Like just kind of like saying, like, okay, well, this is what I think could improve and yeah. stuff like that, and what we need fixed and stuff like that. Because well, I'm, I'm I'm glad we have this conversation because that's like one of the unwritten things that we all just deal with. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I just gotta deal with it. Like, you know what I mean? It's a you or know, you gotta like, figure it out. Low latency mode that like 
just is standard and doesn't affect the audio like low latency mode does. Or native you just make it so that whatever new version of audio auto tune it is, it still opens the old ones. Yes. Please, like, that's it. Like that's it. That's the and easiest that's, fix, which I know you can do. I know you can. I do know it. you can I do it, it, especially with the subscription pro. Uh, that you guys are doing now. You know the vibe. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. With yeah. the whole subscription, it's wild, dog. Like, heck <laughs> yeah. He kind of answered one of my, my one gotta goes. Please hit him with us. <laughs> hit him with, hit him with something, dog. Do Please, it, bro. <clears throat> Come on, bro. Um, I know one of his, I know a few of his answers. I know. <laughs> it's all good. It's all uh, good. We're gonna start with this one Waves versus UAD versus Fab Filter. Oh, man. Those are like my three go tos. Uh huh. <laughs> we know. One gotta go. One gotta go. Oh shit! <laughs> you know, everyone says this same, like. By the way, he was the first because you thought about something. You said, "Oh no, wait." Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to think. Uh, By man, the way, he only... taught me what a hard drive, uh, what the satellite was, because I was like, "Is that a hard drive?" Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just to get into UAD like, stuff, no. like the chips. Mm. Uh -huh. I think, man, man, I, um, is that your input? Can like, I take a shot? Who, like yeah, I, know, I, know. <laughs> I was like, is that your input? Who wants to be a millionaire right yeah. here? No, 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 no. Yeah, please. I would say, I would say Waves only because I can do with the other plugins, you know, what yeah. I do in Waves. I just uh, got you. Yeah. So you feel like, so you say, so you're saying get rid of which one? Get rid of Waves. Get rid of Waves. That's a Bad. first. Keep that yeah. UAD. Yeah, yeah I, I, love, I love the sound of the, the UAD stuff. I really do. Well, yeah. I got, they you know, do. and they've been around for so, like I know you're using like legacy stuff too. Yeah. Like stuff that just been there for just yeah. years and, and stuff. Bought, did you buy the, you bought the UAD joints. Like yeah. you didn't get the that new subscription. I'd be pissed. No, I got, I got, the, I got the, the mm, satellite pissed that somebody He was like, look, I had to do what I had to do. Yeah, he ain't got no, no choice, I bet. Like, if I got all the professional shit, and now I just could get it for 20 bucks. Who is that what it is now? Is that all it is? Like yeah. Bucks. Yeah, mo. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, bro. Not everything, though. But yeah. yeah. But it, it kind of, you know how it is. Because yeah. I, I come from the years of, like, the Mercury bundle. Yeah, 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 bundle. yeah, yeah, yeah Like, yeah. dog, I remember when they said my studio has the Mercury bundle. I'm like, bro, you got yeah. the Mercury? Yeah, like, yeah. that's every plugin. It was like 200-something plugins. Yeah. Back then, that was crazy. But I was like, there's no way my computer can even load seven of these. But yeah. cool, I'm with it. So it's, uh, it's odd to see. Anymore? Yeah, hey, yeah. Would you lo rather lose... The undo button or the space bar? Like the shortcut. Mm. What do you mean? Just Z? So uh, Z. So Command Z or space. That, I don't know. It's just Z. The, the focus. Oh, yeah, because you do, uh, what's it called? Focus in, in Pro Tools? Mm. It's called, I forgot what it's called, but it's a little little thing in the top right corner in the edit window. And then. Oh, Command Focus. Command Focus. Command yeah, Focus. So Z and then A to cut the, the, the yes. beginning wow. and D. It kind of takes off. Command, you don't yeah, have to hold command. Yeah. It's just mm. one key. I have mine on command focus too. Like yeah. it's a little thing in a regions list at the top. Like yeah, a little, yeah, yeah, little yellow button. Yeah, yeah you yeah. wouldn't dog. I remember one time I was like, my quickies weren't working. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? And I remember having to search and search, and it was like this. And I was like, this little button, yeah. like, dog, that's like you ever, and this is so nerdy, bro. And I want to know if you dealt with this. You ever make a mistake and hit in? Right? Oh, yeah. And, but, and, yeah, and, and then, now your cursor yeah, doesn't yeah. start. You're like, what the yeah. fuck? Oh, like, yeah, bro. No. All the oh, time. my God. Like, we need to move that in button, like, way up, yeah. like, somewhere else. But it's a weird little, little thing. Mm -hmm. I've never talked about that with <laughs> yeah. anyone, bro. Like, crazy. there's another one, too. It's a quickie, uh -huh. and I forget what it is, but it's like a, um, it disables the, 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 uh -huh. oh, God, I can't think of it. It disables a play stop button or some shit like that. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's like separate. It's like separation selection. It's a weird word. But yeah, it's like up at the top somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But you press scary. it. Yeah, you're in hell. Yeah, like, that's yeah. scary. That sounds yeah. scary. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Look, I, I hate I'm giving him ammo for like pro. <laughs> I hate it, bro. Just trying to say. <laughs> but yeah, would you rather lose your undo shortcut or your pro, uh, play pause shortcut? Sounds easy, but did you think about it or undo. Well, okay. I mean. Yeah, I guess the undo because like spacebar so crucial. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> space I need that, bro. I ain't gonna lie. So like, everybody says bar. that, but at the same time, it's easier. I think I would choose the uh, mm -hmm. un to keep undo. Okay, because I feel like would it be easier to always have like if my mouse is always on the on the play button on the play button mm -hmm. and control? Because think about it, you gotta go edit, undo, whatever, or I could just have my mouse on the. Can I, like a one button. can I give you my little cheat code around it? So if you have a numpad and you oh, hit yeah. three, yep. you're lit. That's we don't even need a space yeah. bar like to yeah. really record. Mm -hmm. But what I will say is, as far as um the undo button, like saying edit undo, that 
is also a little tricky because I can also go into, I can open up the undo history window mm -hmm. and I can just click, boom, and go oh, back yeah. up. Yep. So I can literally, and that's what I love about Pro Tools, like there's also always so many ways to do different yeah. things. And I see something, like I remember working with one engineer, he had an undo history and it tells you the moves too. Yeah. So yeah. I can literally say, oh, right before I did that fader move, I can just go right back and pop up to it. Yeah. So there's a little, a few workarounds for it too. That's kind of uh, fun. Would you rather lose? Oh man, this, this kind of like, does it make sense? But hey, would you rather lose your bouncing place or the quantize, if that even works in mm. on the grid? Would it you rather lose work. the grid or bouncing place? <laughs> if it works, yeah. yo, that's a, you gotta listen to him, man. Yeah. Little shots he throws <laughs> if your quantize works. Yes, option, uh, I forgot what it is, but yes, we have quantize. Option zero, bro. I think. Yeah, 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 zero. Yeah, yeah, zero. Uh, so which one? Bouncing place, first, or, oh. bouncing place or bouncing quantize. place? You will get rid of it. Yeah. Got you, got you. Got you. And then, um, my the last question we've been bringing around is what's one plugin that you uh see a lot of engineers use that you're just like ugh, on? and for <laughs> just so you feel safe, our answer is always uh S one Imager. S one Imager. I love that thing. Yo, Word? yo, I I, I see people like nah. I, even Angelina, I'm laughing at him because he's laughing too. He's <laughs> like, yo, fact. But like the S one Imager, um. I could, I could, I've been seeing a lot of people keep it. The yeah. What was the thing? It was the what? middle information? Yeah, I always felt funny about it with my middle information. Yeah. But I, at the same time, you know, depending on what you're using it for, yeah. I can understand. Mm -hmm. But I I used to use it like a like an asshole, right? And mm -hmm. Like guitar, make it wider. And yeah, just throw yeah. up the S1. <laughs> yeah. And then I play it on a mono system and I was like, oh, my middle, like where's my middle? So yeah. yeah, so that's why I was always like funny with S1 Imager and stuff like that. But yeah, I can see. What do you probably use it for in your situation? Recording and stuff? Um, not so, I mean, I mix a lot. Oh, too. that's right, right. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, mixing yeah, yeah. as well, yeah, for sure. Y'all need to put me in the put me in the Tap, game. Yo, coach. put my man yeah. in the game, put man. Me, game. Me the game. It's already yeah. mixed. It comes already yeah. mixed. No, bro. you know what's funny? Because I beat big name mixers. Like uh -huh. we've got the mix, right? And everyone's like, "Yeah, but he's so and so." Yeah, <laughs> ah, right. I get it. Politics of it all. Yeah, which is okay. which I think is important for people to hear. To be oh, honest 100? with you, yeah, yeah. yeah. politics in the engineering game too. Like, like I ain't safe. Yeah, yeah. facts, facts, facts. But that's great. What you think about? Um, engineers, especially like yourself, because he's one of those engineers that produces. Like, right. whether you want right. to like say he's behind the NPC, no. But he's adding the pauses and he's quick with it. Like he'll do, I'll tell him whatever, and he can understand the weird language. Because a lot of times, artists don't know how to like explain what they want, mm -hmm. like, make it darker or make it whatever. Right. He knows how to get it. What you think about the whole split situation with engineers? I mean, I think mm -hmm. every single record should allocate three to five percent to tracking engineers. Wow. Mm. Hundred percent. Like right, we I agree. Especially for people like you're saying, like me, we I'm helping produce these records. That's man. very true, man. There's like tone, the, everything. They're sending a beat off and it's me and the artist. Yeah. And we, I'm producing them right there. You that's know what I'm saying? True. And then I'm sending it off and that's all it is. Like we'll never mm. have a hot take. Have a hot take. Yeah. I, I think like there is no record. Like three to five percent is not a big At amount. All, you know what I'm not, saying? Man. Like yeah. every single record should have that, in my opinion. And, think, um, uh, and then, you know, depending on if you do more, you know, you should get more. That's true, right. too. Yeah. Um, I mean, you you know, when I, when I think about it, I got you, really, yeah. I'll come to you. When I think about that, I'm glad you touched on that because in the back of my mind, I'm like, yo, dude, like, like Van Halen's guitar or all that stuff. Like at the end of the day, of course, amazing person that has this performance, but you're the person capturing that, right? Like choosing the tonality, what mic, should it sound more open? Should it sound more closed? Like it would be a big difference if you put an SM58 on his guitar as opposed to saying, no, I put a, you know, a Royer 121, you know, like, yeah. so I think that I, you're, you're absolutely right, but that conversation I feel like just doesn't get brought up like at all. Like, like I said, recording engineer I feel like just doesn't get. No, you like, ask for it, then they'll never call you back. Uh, yeah. Wow. Exactly. That yeah. Sucks uh, too. Yeah. yeah. I think I think uh, tracking engineers would deserve more than mixing master engineers. I think because I feel like you're probably right. Tracking engineers are the only engineers that are involved in the creation of sound. Yeah. Right. Whether it's the removal or like like I said, pausing the beat, right. whatever. Um. And depending on how heavy of a hand right. the mix uh, engineer has, sometimes, like he said, the vocal will just go straight through and just like, I right, let's boost it a little. And yeah, okay. that's true. Yeah. I got a, I got the worst analogy on earth for recording mixing, recording mixing and mastering engineer. What is it? The recording engineer is like 
okay, great. You want to grow your hair to get braids, right? Boom. What we're going to do is we're going to use black castor oil. We're going to like shampoo it. We're going to groom this thing to be like mm -hmm. beautiful and stuff so you have this healthy head of hair. Oh my gosh, I know where you're going. You know I'm going. This healthy head of hair. And that's tough because if you grow your hair wrong, you're, it could, you know, ab it's a lot. When, it's mm -hmm. when it's out and it's big, your hair looks terrible when you yeah. braid it. Okay, cool. So to mix it, the recording engineer is getting all of this stuff, the nutrients, knows exactly how to mature mm -hmm. this thing. Now the mix engineer comes and say, look at this beautiful thing I have to work with. Let's and just braid the hair. And she just braids the hair. Nice. Make sure everything is neat, clean. Yeah. This is one of the worst analogies. This best. is actually fine. This is actually good. I know, I know how you end this off yes. now. Now yeah. I'm thinking about no, it. Look, look, look. So then, um, uh, yeah, the, the, the mix engineer braids the hair. It's beautiful. Then the mastering engineer comes in and, and, does the shape and up. just does the shape <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. So the mastering engineer sense. just does the shape up and that's it. But we yeah. wouldn't have any of that nice or that kind of thing if it wasn't for the recording engineer. So the back of mind, like that's the way I describe you is that's you amazing. groomed it, you, you know, you gave it nutrition, you figured out how to get it to the place, looking at the mastering engineer saying, hey, I'm making it easier for you. So I think that is a conversation I feel like needs to be. To, like, that is an amazing way. That this I'll, is the I'll, most I'll, ignorant I'll, podcast on earth to describe recording mixing <laughs> and mastering with braiding hair. Bro. But good mixing engineers they put their foot in that I'm mouth. sure. You know what right, I mean? like, right. So definitely hats off. Right. Trust me, when my mom was braiding my hair versus the chick that I paid $35, it was, it was a big a difference. difference. Yeah. It was yeah. a big difference. big difference. Heck yeah. Man, what you got going on, bro? Lately, like, what you... What like you, I said, man, I kind of transition more into mixing. That's yeah, really you've been yeah. opening that up. Talk, talk a little bit about that. Um, Yeah, for so long, I've just been working with major labels <clears> and <throat> publishers and stuff and mm -hmm. just not getting the looks I'm, <laughs> you know, yeah, wanting and stuff. Right, so it's like, yo, I got to open it up to everybody and... It's really where I'm at right now. It's just trying to get more into the mixing side yeah. and stuff like that. Well, one thing I will say is I feel like uh, industry-wise, like the re I've seen so many recording engineers transition to mixing yeah. as of lately. Yeah. So I'm actually like feeling like now I feel like people are more open to it. Yeah. Um, Obviously, from Ben Thomas that we've had on, like literally recording yeah. strict what to mixing, TZO re recording what to mixing, even Baines recording what to yeah. mix. Like all of those guys, I've seen them first as recording and then transition. So I feel like. I feel like that'll I feel like that'll come, man, and I'm excited about it because, like I said, when he would give us the records for me to even mix, I'd be like, "Fuck, uh, kind of don't want to touch this shit," <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, and stuff like that. So I, I think that it, if there was a time for that transition to be yeah. easy, I think it's easier now. Sure, I know you have your fight, yeah. but nonetheless, I think that I think that you'll I think you're, you're gonna be just fine, dog. Like I'm excited for you and are stuff. You, are you open to the public? Like, for, yeah, yeah. Oh, like, mixed it on Instagram. Reach out to me. Bet. You know what I mean. Um, yeah, you know, for me, I think a lot of it has been marketing, bro. I'm like, yeah. mm. I come from a, I'm, I'm a, I was born in Mexico, so I'm an immigrant, mm -hmm. and my whole life, you know, we we were taught not to, like, you don't want to gain attention, bro. Not from yeah. police, mm -hmm. not from immigrant. Like, I was, yeah. I was came here illegally, you know, right. most of my life. So, I don't, I don't. That's part of why I'm an engineer. I don't right. like attention. I don't like yeah. being in the forefront. Yeah. That's not the climate of the music industry. Nah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's. You got to be the look at me, look at me, look at me. And that's yeah. just not my personality. Right. That's not even, I don't even like it. Like, even this is kind of tough for me. Sure, like, it's a little <laughs> out. Yeah, yeah, it's a little yeah, out yeah. there. Yeah, it's yeah, funny because yeah. we look at some of the engineers that we bring on and some of the engineers we meet um, and with the big names and, like, your catalog of records is comparable and sometimes beats them. So Bro, I'm in like, the 1%. Like, not even to cap. Right. Like, hundred. Like half these sites don't even got my credits because I don't give a fuck. I right. care about the craft. I don't... I've never bought a plaque. I got two plaques that my school gave to me. Wow. Because that's not why I do this right. shit. I get like, you understand. I literally would do this shit for free for the rest of my life. Right. Um, but again, goes back to the marketing and yeah. that's where, like, yeah, yeah. And that's where I, I, I'm kind of transitioning more into... Um, but yeah, no, like on this planet, bro, there's very few engineers that, that in my like opinion, mm -hmm. are on the same level. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right. there's there's very few peers and in, in respect right. to all of them. Right. But um, yeah, there's the, and that's what made me start to realize. I'm like, because I started meeting some of these dudes, and I'm like, yo, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Uh -huh, you really don't know what the fuck you're doing. Right, but right. you, the world thinks you do, and salute to you and your hustle. But like. I, I worry about the craft and the art of engineering and mixing right. and recording. Like, right. it's, it's getting lost, right. man. You know right. what I'm saying? So maybe I could help bring that back to the forefront some. I get that. I understand. You're one of those big secrets in the industry. Yeah, yeah. The and that's why we wanted to have you. You know, when I got the opportunity to have you on and stuff like that, I said that. I was like, yo, like, let's. Because obviously, like, the fact that you and I are talking about how to mic cabinets for yeah. guitars. Yeah. yeah. You know you haven't got to ask that fucking question nah, in forever. Man. But that's something that get, has gotten lost as far yeah, as capturing yeah. tones and stuff. But nonetheless, Omar, I want to yeah. say thank you 
you so much for coming on, bro. One time, make some noise for Omar one time. Yes, sir. Um, where can they find you um, in the whole nine? Like, where can we yeah. send you? Where can we get you to ask people to get you some mixes? As of right now, uh-huh. on Instagram, O Mixed It, O M I X E D I T. I'm uh, working on my website. I'm, I'm working on some things. Yeah, he I'm working. Saying. Here we go. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, so, cool. right. Cool. Well, back. Thank you so much for coming. Thank yeah, you, thank bro. You guys for really, yeah, yeah, yeah. No doubt, bro. No, no, no doubt. So, this has been the My Audio Nerds Podcast, the podcast for Audio Nerds like yourself. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, remember, one lucky person in that comment section is going to get that VIP Gold Edition Rosetta EQ or compressor. Please leave your at name for Instagram so that we can DM you and get that to you. This has been the My Audio Nerds Podcast. Until next time, y'all. Peace. Yay.